Gentlemen, Toastmaster Ben. I was once in a very beautiful place, a dreamlike place, where white pebbles like snowflakes were hovering all around me. I was engulfed with cool waters pulsating all over my body. It was like <coughs> a dream. And in a moment, it transformed from being dreamlike into a dreadful nightmare. Mr. Toastmaster, <coughs> fellow Toastmasters, welcome guests. Have you heard about seeing your life flash before your eyes when you're near death? Well, I was very near to that point when I found myself at the bottom of Blue Spring, 120 feet deep in an underwater cave. And I had to face a real life or death situation. I'm standing here today thanks to a thorough training program a dive buddy, and the grace of God. This speech is entitled The Dive, but it could be entitled, maybe a subtitle, A Tale of Mercy, Poor Judgment, and Outright Stupidity. First, I'll tell you how I got into this situation. I'll tell you how we dealt with the challenge, and I'll tell you a few lessons that I learned, maybe that we can all learn from the experience. Being a native Floridian, I grew up always wanting to scuba dive. I finally had the opportunity when I graduated from college, got a job, and had some money. So my new roommate, a work colleague, and I decided to become certified. So we go out, we go on a spinning spree. We get the latest and <coughs> greatest of dive gear. We got a buoyancy compensation vest known as a BC. We got the regulators, mass suspense, snorkel, everything except the tank. We rent those. And a wetsuit because who needs those in Florida? So we end up going through the process and become certified. We are ready to take on the underwater world, or so we thought. So we think, let's go to Blue Springs. It's a famous nearby spring. It's the largest spring off of the St. John's River in central Florida, and it's known for its manatees. Let's go up there. So we get up one morning, head out to the dive shop, rent the tanks, and go on our way. We get up to the, the guard station, check in, tell them we're going for diving, and then park Love all of our gear, weight belts, uh, tanks, all the stuff out to, it's always heavy, heavy load to carry, out to the water's edge. We look out, there's only a few snorkelers there, no scuba divers. We're going to have the spring to ourselves. Get geared up, and we swim out to just over the spring. We put our masks on and begin our descent. It's about 20 feet down before we get to the entrance to the cavern. We continue our descent as quickly as possible. It angles down very sharply at about 45 feet, and we continue further down, 60, 80 feet. At 80 feet, there's very little natural light, so we pull out our flashlights so we can see where we're going. <clears throat> and continue quickly to the bottom. We get to the boil room. The boil room is about 20 feet in diameter, and it's about 110 feet uh, at, the, at the top of the ceiling and 120 feet at the bottom. We swim inside it. Being inside it is like being in a snow globe. These glowing white pebbles are hovering and bouncing and dancing all around us. It's extraordinary because we are at the, at the gusher of the spring. This is gushing about 100 million gallons of water a day. The force is blowing up all the stones and pebbles and as they go up, then they drift back down, up and down all around us. It's extraordinary. So we begin our exploration of the cave very quickly. I'm on one side of the room. My dive buddy Ed is on the other side of the room. Just as I begin exploring, I take a breath. Something's not quite right. I pull out my, my gauge and I look at it. I'm almost out of air. Just then, the next breath, I am completely out of air. I have to get to my dive buddy. He's all the way across the room. Okay, I'll swim across. Wait, I can't do that because the gusher is so powerful, had I swum across it, it would have ripped the mask off my face and propelled me to the ceiling of the room. So that was unacceptable. I decided I would have to swim around the, the, the cave to get to him. So as I'm going around, I get close enough, I think I'll flip my flipper, my fin over to him to get his attention. As I swing my leg around, the force of the water grabs my flipper and flips me sideways. 
That doesn't work. I regain my composure and pull myself around the wall to him. I get his attention and I give him the, the dive signal, no air. I can see on his face and I know what he's thinking. We just got certified, Doug's testing me. As he's turning away, I stick my gauge up to him and again, signal no air. At the same time, I grab his octopus, which is a spare regulator that some divers have, and I took a breath. <sighs> Sweet air. However, the airflow was impeded and that wasn't going to work. And so I threw it down and he gave me his regulator. And I took two breaths. <sighs> it was so good. I took it back to him and I gave him the signal that we had to ascend. Now, here was our problem. At this depth, our buoyancy compensation vests are fully inflated to give us natural buoyancy. So we have to release the air in the vests. The force of the water is pushing us up, so there's a great buoyancy there. We have to hold our flashlights, we have to hold onto the wall, and we have to share, have a hand to share our regulator. We needed four hands each. This wasn't going to work, but we still begin the ascent. At about 20 feet up, the force of the water and the buoyancy in my vest completely breaks us apart, and I go flailing up through the cavern, up the fissure, bouncing off walls, completely unable to slow my ascent. My one thought is this is occurring, I'm going to get the bends. Decompression sickness, pain, severe pain in joints. But there's nothing I can do. I bounce off the walls, I go through the exit, again at about a 20 foot depth, and go propelling up to the surface of the water so fast, it felt as if my whole body came through the surface of the water. That didn't matter, I was just taking in all the oxygen I could get, and it was nice. And I prepare for the bends. Nothing happens, I wait a few moments, Ed comes up and I say, we must go back down to do a decompression. So we go back down to 15 feet and we decompress for a few minutes, return to the surface, recover on the shoreline. Turns out the tank I rented had a faulty O-ring allowing the air to leak out of my tank. So by the time I got down, it was all gone. What a lesson we learned. The lesson is that we were so enthusiastic about being divers, we neglected the value of training, the value of risk management, we went into a cave, we, had, we did a, a, a dive requiring comp buoyancy compensation, we didn't have an experienced diver with us, and we needed flashlights. We were doing everything wrong. I've learned since the dive that the state has now put up some underwater signs. At 60 feet, they have a sign that says, prevent your death. Do not proceed further unless you are trained in cave diving. And there's another sign at 80 feet for slow learners. <laughs> I've, my, that bottom line on this is, adventure is wonderful. It's great to pursue it. But the thing is, when you're going to challenge new boundaries, go to new heights or new depths, take along some experience with you for the ride or the dive. Mr. Toastmaster.